with your host, Mick Trier, and Drake University head football coach, Rob Ash. The Rob Ash Show is brought to you in part by Dave Ostrom, Mitsubishi, 90th and Hickman in Des Moines. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Rob Ash Show. I'm Mick Trill, along with Drake football coach Rob Ash. And, Coach, last week we talked about what should have been a good, good ball game against Illinois Benedictine, but 59-7, it was all Bulldogs on Saturday. That was a, our best performance of the year by far, Mick. Our defense went out and shut down the sixth-rated offensive team in the country, holding them about 300 yards below their average. We shut out Eric Green, who had 66 catches coming into the game. He didn't even have a catch in the game, and they set us up for a great day. Certainly started out right at the beginning of the ball game. They drove down to the 20-yard line. You took the ball, went down, and scored. Your punter never came off the bench. The game was over early, it looked like. We got on them in a big hurry, Mick, which was really important because a year ago we had won you know, decisively about 55 to 8 or something. And we felt if we could get a good start and let them start remembering last year's game, that it would be to our advantage. And the defense did a great job stopping that first drive and getting us started. Mr. Fletcher stepped in again this week, four touchdown passes. That's the school record, I believe. That ties the record, but more important than that, he did a great job just running the football team. You know, he made the right choices at the line of scrimmage. You know, he got the running game going. His play faking was good as well as the passing, and it was a pretty good team effort. We're seeing some different people here for the Bulldogs since the start of the season, of course. We talked about Fletcher, Cortez Hall. He continues to ramble for yards. What's he averaging, seven points or seven yards per carry right now? In the now? last two games, Cortez has had a lot of big plays for us, and Matt Conlon, uh, another freshman has really come on here lately. We were laughing about this the other day, uh, Mick, uh, about 10 days before our Simpson game, the two top guys, you know, the guys that were slated to be the starters for Simpson were Cortez Hall and Matt Conlon. And then due to injuries, we got Damon Taylor in there. He did a good job and so forth. A lot of guys have done a good job, but it's ironic that now finally we come back here with the same two guys that at the beginning of the season were supposed to be in there. You know, uh, certainly when we sit here, I thought maybe we'd talk about offense, but you got to talk about defense. Second week in a row, you had to meet up with uh, a top receiver in a football game, and, and uh, this guy wasn't even in the game. Well, we were able to take Eric Green out of the game with our pass rush. Most of the routes that Illinois Benedictine wanted to throw to him uh, took a while to develop, and they didn't have the time to throw. So they were, they were left with just trying to throw the quick passes to their big tight end, Bob McMillan, and Greg Gerlock shut him down beautifully. Well, we have some exciting highlights of this football game upcoming. I think you'll enjoy them. We'll be back in just a moment. The creators of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, 1991 Motor Trend Import Car of the Year, proudly present the stunning new Mitsubishi Eclipse for 1992. Because nothing livens up a family like a little sibling rivalry. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Sam Siegel, his wife Annette, daughters Elise and Marlene, and grandchildren Michael, Risa, and Mikey invite you to join them and all the employees at Home Plastics in supporting the Drake Bulldogs all season long. This fall, there's exciting nonstop action and entertainment when the Bulldogs hit the field. Take your family to all the games. Sam does. There are two names Des Moines can count on, Home Plastics and Drake University. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once and you'll be back for more. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. You know, Coach Todd Kim, who was doing the radio broadcast in that football game, told me that it looked like the Bulldogs intimidated Illinois Benedictine. Do you think uh, the Bulldogs are starting to do that to some teams? We play a very physical game, Nick, and, you know, we are very, very conscious in our program of making sure that all of our aggressiveness and contact and everything else comes during the play. Some teams try to be tough after the play or talking or whatever, and we try, we try to teach our team not to talk and not to try to play after the whistle. You've got to be good enough to get your licks in during the play, and I think we did that. We 
really were very physical and aggressive. Our receivers and DBs are very hard hitting, and linemen up front have always been good. I think that's true to a certain extent. We brought the game to them. Well, we got a lot of highlights to show you, so let's get out of here for the Bulldogs. Again, 59-7, Drake a winner. It was kind of a cold day, though. Cold and very windy in Lyle, Illinois. Uh, beautiful uh, facility that the uh, Benedictine monks had there about 100 years ago and the, with the academy. and. Also the college, Illinois Benedictine had the uh, ball first. There's Bob McMillan, number 88, the big tight end, uh, taking a, a reception on the, the first drive of the game. He's a very intimidating big receiver. Here's another play to him. And Greg Gerlock, number 15, was matched up with McMillan in man-to-man -man coverage, did a great job. Here's three times now in this first drive. They go to McMillan. Uh, Gerlock's there on him all three times, but they continued to move down the field. Finally, they split him out, and that put uh, Brad Nemec on McMillan. They tried to hit him for the touchdown, and Brad Nemec, number 23, did a great job of, of stripping the ball away from McMillan. And then they went with uh, this, a different formation, and, and Matt Garvis got the good pressure up the middle and gave us a, 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 got a chance to hold them to the field goal. Luckily, when their field goal kicker came out, it was wide left, and we got out of that first drive with no points. That was a great stop by our defense, and secondary did a good job and good pressure on it. We got the ball back, of course, after the missed field goal. Roy Fletcher hits Chad Riley on third and four to convert our first third down situation of the game. Then we've got Don Sewing running off tackle. Great job up front by the line, getting him a crease, and Don did a good job just with a powerful run off tackle. Then we, that gave us a first, another first down. Then on the first down play here, we hit Cortez Hole up the middle. We caught him in a stunt. There was nobody there to, to, to pick him off, and Cortez turned on great speed and was able to take it all the way for a touchdown. That had to be a devastating start for Illinois Benedictine because they had taken a long time to drive down the field. They missed the field goal, and then in four or five plays, we had the uh, touchdown. Now watch this. They tried that same play to McMillan, and he tapped it around, and Greg Gerlock intercepted the ball. Again, this matchup going back and forth, and Greg certainly won that round and got the interception. Gave us the ball on, our, on their side of the 50. We ran with a quick pass here to Sean Diggs, uh, getting us going again, trying to keep them wide and loose so we could run the football. Here's Cortez Hall off tackle, almost broke that one all the way, but he got tripped up and uh, still a good surge by the offensive line. Now a play action pass, Roy starts to come out of the pocket, but he finds Chad Briley down inside the five for a big first down there. That gave us the ball first and goal, and we ran Cortez Hall off tackle. The Illinois Benedictine didn't get lined up right. There was no defensive end in on the play, so it made us a very simple touchdown, and that made it 14 to nothing. Again, the defensive turnover set up that drive. Greg Gerlock on the interception. There's his dad right there in the ball hat uh, watching the game. The officials were a little concerned because there was some talking back and forth. We got back at it again. Good pressure here by Craig Ortworth. Look at the strength pulling down. You'll see number 21, Eric Green, was coming across the field. They wanted to get the ball to him, but Ortworth got there too quickly. In addition to that, there was holding on IBC, moving him way back. Then they fumble. See the ball rolling on the ground there, and Steve Tennold, number 56, on the left side of the pile down there, came up with the recovery. And that gave us the ball in fantastic field position, uh, clear down inside the IBC 20. We were able, to, after the, the uh, turnover, ran the ball a couple times. We got Mike Stanfill in there, Matt Conlon. On third down, Roy steps up in the pocket and finds Chad Briley over the middle again. Chad gets away from the free safety and uh, got the touchdown. Now that was a pressure again. Uh, both inside linebackers came and a strong safety, and we were able to block their stunt and give Roy all that time to throw. And anytime you can do that, uh, you're going to have a big play. Here's another good stunt, Kevin Beveridge, right in, untouched, able to make the sack. They were trying to get the ball to green again, and, and uh, the pressure there on the stunt, uh, just, you know, we got to uh, the quarterback before he had any chance at all to get the play started. So the defense got the ball back for us. Now we're getting into second quarter action. Here's Matt Conlon, number 30. We rotated Conlon and Hull uh, the whole day. They were the only two tailbacks we had on the trip because Damon Taylor is still injured. And so Matt got a good run, and then Mike Stanfield, who's been out a couple day, uh, weeks with an injury, was back. Mike had a good run on the same play that we had with, uh, with Don Sewing earlier. So good balance, you know, using a lot of people. Now we fake the play to uh, Cortez, and here's Roy keeping a football and running around the end. When we got out there, there was nobody there. Uh, Jeff Creel and Jeff Brager both got good blocks, and I think nobody was more surprised than Roy Fletcher. <laughs> and so to show you, that we'll show you again. Look at the good fake to, uh, to Matt Conlon, I think it was, on this particular play. He actually got tackled, and eight Illinois Benedictine players went in on the run fake, and there were three guys left. Brager and Creel blocked two of them. Roy made the other one miss. I guess he thinks he's Jamie D'Angelo. I don't know. <laughs>
Everybody was real happy about that. And I'll tell you, that was great. We, that really gave our team a spark. Uh, everybody was excited for Roy. Uh, he's not known to be a really fast guy on the team or anything, and, and uh, he was able to make the play. There's some of the uh, Drake fans. We had a great group of fans, parents, coaches, wives, and some people from the Chicago area. Look at this. They went back to McMillan again, right next play, and Greg Gerlach intercepted. They really wanted to go to him, and two times in a row, Gerlach's not only stopped the play, but picked it off. And it was the last time they tried that play in the game. Greg, you know, a senior, just a fantastic performance to be able to shut down a great receiver like McMillan. Very intimidating for them that he could do that. So we got the ball once again in great field position with the two interceptions and the fumble. We've had the ball on their side of the 50 three times. Sean Diggs takes that short pass. Here's Don Sewing breaking some tackles, running hard up through the middle. You see our guys continuing to play hard through the whistle, blocking at the ends of these plays. And that's, that's what makes our team tough. We keep working hard. Here's Cortez Hole with a strong run. First guy that tackles our running backs, all of them, has a hard time bringing them down. They do a nice job, and our line has been opening up some big holes to get us to that second level. Now here's a quick slant to Jeff Creel. Jeff got the touchdown. He does a dumb thing here. He tried to taunt the uh, defensive back. That cost us 15 yards, but he had had a little trouble with that guy during the course of the game. And, you know, I, I can understand why he did that, but we always tell guys you've got to want to do something like that and know enough not to. So I was a little upset with Jeff for that, but it was a great, uh, a great catch for the touchdown. And the defense came right back and kept up the intensity. Steve Tennold and Steve Flattery on the tackle there. Now watch out, and you'll see from left to right, here comes Matt Garvis on the pressure. They wanted to go to Eric Green on one of their favorite sprint out routes, but there was no place for the quarterback to sprint to. And we got the ball back one more time. Matt Conlon with a good hard run. This is still in the second quarter. It's 35-0. Conlon with another good run here off tackle. Watch him. Good move there. And yet another good move, making a guy miss. Good job by getting what we call plus yardage. Yardage after the first player on the defense gets up there. And then Roy drops back, scrambles around a little bit, and finds Don Bowman down the seam. Don breaks the tackle, takes it in for the touchdown. It just seemed like everything went right. It was one of those days where you know lots of different people were getting a turn to play, and lots of people were making plays. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's no no substitute for that kind of a balance. And so it was 42 to nothing. Uh, going into the halftime, and uh, Drake fans were happy, but it made it a little tough, uh, you know, because now you've got the whole second half to play. You want to make sure you keep the, uh, the troops motivated and so forth in the second half of the football game, but our defense did a good job. Here's some, uh, some plays from the second half. Art Rainier, number 49, and Jason Conway stopping the screen pass by getting their hands up, and, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a good show. In fact, we got a lot of our uh, reserve guys in in the second quarter, reserves being second string type people. Here's the first play, actually, of the second half. Chad Briley catches a short pass, but fumbles. Luckily, Chad was quick enough to get it back and kept the drive alive. That could have given Illinois Benedictine a spark. But unfortunately for them, he got it back. Roy ran that same keeper play that he had run for a touchdown. They were on to him, but now the pass was open. He did a good job executing that play to Jeff Brager. Here's a fake in the line and the pass to Jeff Creel. Beautifully executed play. We've run that play two or three times for touchdowns. That was our first drive of the second half. We picked up right where we left off, got the 49-0 lead. Now at this point, we're able to start working some people in the game. One of the problems you have is you only take about two deep on a road trip like this. You have your first and second string. You don't have anybody else to put in the game. So a lot of the guys played uh, quite a bit in this football game. Here's a next time we got the ball back, we hit Creel again. Good block by Briley there at the top of the screen. And driving down again. It's still early in the third quarter, which is why we're still, we still have these people um, on the field. For example, at our, our flanker position, as you see Chad Briley running with the football, being real determined, hard to bring down. Only guys we had at, at IBC to play that position were Briley and Diggs. There was a wedding, I guess, earlier in the day, and that was the wedding reception. That was pretty interesting. And there's Matt Conlon taking this ball in for the touchdown. This made it 56, I think, to nothing. I kind of lost track here. But again, it was, yeah, 56 to 6 by this time in the fourth quarter. Again, it was difficult because I only got two tailbacks, two wide receivers, and we only had two deep on the defense. But we did get everybody in the football game. Here's most of our number twos in the defensive line. Art Rainier with good pressure again, causing their quarterback to throw the ball away. We got the ball back in good field position. Now, this was interesting at the end of the game. Watch the official there. We're going to fake to the tailback, but he steps up in a pile and blows his whistle. He thinks the fake was so good by Craig McLean, our reserve quarterback, that he thought, the official thought that uh, the ball had been handed off. He blew the whistle dead. So we got a free play. We did the play over again. He even fooled the radio team. They thought there were uh, five downs 
in, here in this sequence, but really it was the fourth down because they replayed the down where the, the official blew the whistle. And that gave us a chance for Bill Willers to come in and kick a field goal on fourth down. Last couple flurries here in the fourth quarter, Craig McLean, freshman quarterback, uh, has done a nice job on our JV team, and he's our backup now. Since Jamie D'Angelo's been hurt, he ran that same play Roy had run earlier. And here's Matt Conlon with the second string line, doing a great job blocking. He makes a nice break outside, trips over the 30-yard line there. But uh, that was one of the last few plays of the game. It was a nice run, good effort by all of our guys on our team. Everybody got to play except our punter. He didn't get a chance to play in the game because we didn't punt a single time the entire football game. Coach, I know you expected a little more offensively out of Illinois Benedictine uh, with their stats going into the game. Well, Illinois Benedictine was averaging 450 yards a game in offense, and we held them to 115 yards, and that's just a fantastic performance. Our defense just never let them get started, and it was really had to be a great shock to Illinois Benedictine to have that kind of thing happen because they had had such a great offensive year. Let's move on to our Christopher's Restaurant scoreboard here. Christopher's Restaurant, a tradition in Des Moines, for 30 years, Christopher's features fresh pastas, aged Iowa beef, and fresh seafood. Its lounge is a great place to have a pizza and watch the game or the Rob A show. You might expect all the stats in one favor. Oh boy, you won't ever see stats that are more one-sided than these. Total offense down there, three lines from the bottom. You'll see 564 yards for Drake, only 115 for IBC. Possession time uh, was very one-sided as well. 29 first downs to five. Great job overall. Here's the... Uh, the uh, individual leaders. You won't see a lot of high tackle numbers for our defensive guys because Illinois Benedictine only ran 41 plays in the game. We had 76 plays. Cortez Hall and Matt Conlon both had 100 yards rushing. That's great for two freshmen. Creel and Briley again were our top uh, receivers. And we'll be back to name our players of the game right after this. Gasoline, diesel fuel, and motor oil supplies is crucial to Iowa industry. Timely personal service and quality Conoco products at an affordable price that service professionals and their customers can depend on. Parker Oil Company of Des Moines, Iowa. And welcome back to the Rob A Show. Coach, I know in a game like this, it's awfully tough to name one or two players that played better than anybody else, but you got to do it. Time for our Dave Oster, Mitsubishi Players of the Game. you got to name them. Well, we had an awful lot of guys who got the headlines, so we decided to go with Brad Besh, one of the offensive linemen, because they don't get the headlines. Our line has done a great job all year. Brad had the highest grade of any of the linemen this week in this game, and he's a four-year starter, been a great uh, you know, motivating force and a very solid football player for us all year long. Did an excellent job. Defensively, of course, Greg Gerlach has to be the, the uh, selection because of the way he handled Bob McMillan, the great tight end. You know, McMillan got some catches, but Greg got some too. Two interceptions, did a great job. And he also kept us organized in that secondary, as he always does, on blitz pickups and, and checks and so forth. And he did a great job. Let's move on to our home team player interview. Tony Icabino, what a tough kid. I like this kid. Tony is a very, very inspirational guy to have on the team. You know, he's a linebacker for us. When he started out in the program, he was a nose guard and he played a lot of different positions. Positions, but he's found a home at linebacker. He's one of the guys that keeps the team loose. I'm not sure what he's going to say in his interview, but I'm sure it's going to be interesting. So we'll hear from Tony. The Rob Ash Player Profile is brought to you by Home Team Pizza. Uh, lifting is is obviously it's essential and it's probably the best thing you know as far as outside of practice that you can do to for football um, that's the one thing that's kept me going I am not a huge player I'm you know I'm a typical division three size player but for linebacker uh, being strong is everything 
and quick and strong. That's that's where it's got to be. And and I've already re I've really worked myself hard on the off season, every off season, and um, I've gotten stronger every year. And um, with my uh, my bench and my squat, that's what's kept me going through. I've had very small injuries in the past, never nothing that's really put me out. And I I, I attributed that to to um, the lifting on the off season. Well, I came to Drake as a uh, freshman linebacker. I wanted to start it inside, but um, we we're a little short at the outside linebacker position. And um, Coach Jones, who was the li outside linebacker coach at the time, pretty much took me under my wing, under his wing, and and um, had a lot of confidence in me. And we had a couple couple seniors come into that position uh, you know as a new position to them as well and um, it was mostly a learning process for all of us um, eventually midway through that year I, I, I made a decision to switch to nose guard because um, it was a position that I felt that I could be better at at that point um, I want to just get down and, and play hard nose football pretty much is what I was I was used to used to coming out of high school. I was kind of a rough player, so um, nose guard worked out pretty well. By my sophomore year, I was able to move into the number two spot, got some playing time sophomore year. Um, was on special teams, which I really enjoyed doing. Yeah, I really like kick off a lot, fly down, knock some people over, good time. Um, junior year was uh, probably the biggest transitional year for me. Um, I kind of, coaches, Coach Looney, who was a linebacker coach inside, was tossed around the idea that um, that I was going to play inside next year for him, and never took him seriously. I wasn't sure if that's what he wanted to do. For sure, he kind of, I thought he was joking, and the day of camp, he told me that I was going to be inside, and um, it was just right from there. I had to learn the position in, in, in one two-day session, and. Um, I took the challenge. I, I really liked in, in, inside linebacker. I played that in high school, but I had a lot to learn. And um, the first few games, I was going back and forth with uh, Todd DeMoss and John Elkin, you know, trying to find the person who would fit best with the defense. And I was able to, uh, I was able to nose my way in there and, and play the majority of the games. And I think I had a pretty good year last year, considering you know the burden of learning the position. In a, in a very short time. I entered as an English major in, in the program and um, that was usually, that was my strongest subject coming out of high school. I liked it a lot. Um, very interested in, in literature and stuff. Uh, then I took a couple of psychology courses because I was also interested in that and, and I made the decision about second semester freshman year that I would be a psychology major because I, I was very intrigued by the subject, and as most freshmen are, but I really had a feel for it, and, and it, it was something that um, that I really focused on uh, as a potential career. And being a senior right now, um, I plan on going to graduate school to get my master's degree in, in psychology, and um, that's something that uh, I started making that decision last year. I wasn't sure last year if I was going to go to graduate school or not, but um, I've already completed my, my requirements for my degree right now for my, my BS in psychology, and, and um, definitely a master's in that field is almost essential for a career in therapy. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our large or large pizza with single topping is only $7.99. And it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your large or large. The creators of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, 1991 Motor Trend Import Car of the Year, proudly present the stunning new Mitsubishi Eclipse for 1992. Because nothing livens up a family like a little sibling rivalry. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. 
Our Drake football team uses a lot of option routes in our wide open pass game. We like them because they work. Another option that can work for you is to stay at a Knapp Hotel property in Des Moines. The Savory, Valley West Inn, Travel Lodge North, and the Drake Inn. So whether you're coming to Des Moines for a Drake football weekend, business, or a quiet getaway, you'll pick a winner with Knapp Hotel Properties. For more information, call 1-800-798-2151 and enjoy the Knapp Hotel experience. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Certainly before we talk about this week's opponent for the Drake Bulldogs, we need to remind you about our Hopkins Sporting Good Contest. You can see the things you need to do up on the screen. Don't forget to send it in this week to the Rob A. Show, Drake University Fieldhouse, Des Moines, Iowa, 50311. Coach, let's get at it. Bulldogs back home to the doghouse. Just exactly where you like to be to pick up another W this week. Well, I hope so, Mick. We've won four straight. We're undefeated at home, and uh, our guys are very motivated to try to finish the season undefeated in the doghouse. All of that, Nazarene is the opponent this week. On paper, I thought maybe this team would be a little bit better coming in record-wise. They had a good season last year. This year, are they struggling at all? They are uh, on the record, but they're impressive on paper and on tape. When we look at them, we're very surprised that they haven't won more games than they have up to this point. Uh, it's a situation where they have all the ingredients to have a great football team. Great rushing attack, solid defense, they're well coached. Um, they just hope they don't put it together this week. Last couple of weeks you've had to uh, stop the pass and had a couple of great ends to uh, face up with. This week you got a couple of good backs that are coming in here you got to stop. All of it, Nazarene has a uh, running back attack that's just awesome. They've got a fullback by the name of Ray Caldwell, who's 250 pounds, and a tailback named Jojo Jones, who's a little scat back with great speed. And these two guys are number two and number four in the nation in NAIA in rushing. Two of the top four in the country, and they're very tough to stop. Certainly the Drake Bulldogs have showed the last couple of weeks they match up well against the pass. Does Drake defense a match up better on a running team or a passing team? Well, we pride ourselves on being able to stop the run. That's how we start our preseason. That's been our philosophy and so forth. But we've probably got better paper success, you know, when you look at statistics as far as stopping the passing game. So this is a game where we've got to just shore it up. We've got to be tough inside, and we've got to stop the run. Certainly on paper the last couple of weeks, the Bulldogs have been able to light up the scoreboard. Are you playing as good a football as you have all year right now? I think as a whole team we are. You know, it's, it, everything has fallen together. Uh, our offense is clicking, run and pass both right now, and the defense has had two great performances in a row. At the same time, you know, the teams we've played have been good football teams, but they're not the kind of teams like Dayton and Augustan and some of the ones we played earlier. Olivet's a good, strong team, and they do some different things and should be a new challenge for us. Final home game for some of your seniors? That's right, and that's a big point for our seniors. They really enjoy playing in Drake Stadium. That's one of the reasons they come to Drake in the first place, and I think it's going to be a, a very emotional game for those seniors. One point I wanted to bring up, the Bulldogs ought to be well-rested. The first teamers have only played uh, <laughs> a little bit of uh, maybe yeah. a game in the last couple of games. We, that's okay, though. We needed that. After the tough start that we had in our season, we were pretty banged up through the middle there. In fact, we were probably at our lowest point against Dayton when we needed to be at our strongest point. Now we've got some people healthy. We've got people coming off the injury list. Two straight games with a lot of rest and no injuries coming out of those games. I feel pretty good about the health of our team. Over 50 points in each of the games, the last two ball games. Will we see that this week? I think our offense is, is very explosive. We're capable of a lot of points, but the reason we've gotten high point totals the last two weeks has been because of our defense. They've gotten us the ball in great field position. They've stopped drives quickly. and You know, the passing games haven't taken very long. I think with a running team like we're going to play, it would be very difficult to score 50 points because we won't see the ball as often, and there will be more time going off the clock when they have it. Bulldogs still on track for that uh, best record in Division Three for Drake. That's really something our team wants. They want to end up 7-2-1, and one, which would give them the best record in the history of our Division Three program, and that's very motivating for us right now. I hope we can keep on track for Good that. Good luck to you. Thanks, Nick. We'll see you back here next week on The Rob A. Show.